Hey everybody, welcome to part number 42 of the International Harvester 350 Utility Tractor Project. That's right, I'm finally getting back to the utility tractor. Uh, the last time I worked on this tractor, I had to actually go and look at my own videos to figure it out. It was back in January of 2015. Uh, we had some unusually warm weather in that winter, so I, uh, I think it was in the winter, I don't know, maybe it was in the fall, but I guess the video didn't end up being edited and aired until January 2015, by the looks of it. Anywho, um, the way I left it at that point was I was attempting to get the steering box off of the tractor, which somebody had welded to the top of the tractor. So uh, I kind of gave up on that and said, you know what, I'm just going to going to repair it in place. And I talked about how I had this shaft that I needed to repair. And once I got the repair, the plan was over the winter, do the repair on the shaft and then uh, be able to uh, that following spring install the shaft and continue with the reassembly of my uh, power steering uh, gear train. So what ended up happening was I got busy with other things and that kind of fell off to the wayside and I always said like when people would comment say hey are you ever going to get back to this I would usually say yeah my plan is get my TIG welder working and then do the repairs I need to do on the shaft so that I can then continue this project. Well the TIG weld is working so I've kind of run out of excuses. Um, I uh, actually even thought, well, now that the TIG weld is working, I think I need a, a rotary uh, positioning uh, jig so that I can uh, weld the shaft correctly. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try a different method to get around because then it would turn into a whole, oh, now it's going to be a project of building the rotary table or rotary, rotary positioning jig with an old chuck and the whole gear train and everything. Figure that's just going to delay things even more. So I want to throw a bone to those of you out there who were fans of this series and always wondered why the heck I never got back to it. And also the tractor hasn't run in years. I haven't been starting it regularly or anything like that because with the power steering all taken apart, um, the, the problem with that tractor, not really a problem, but the issue is that the power steering pump is gear driven off of the front of the tractor so off the front of the engine so it's not like I could just undo a belt and not have to worry about the power steering pump running dry if I start the tractor with the lines all disconnected even if I drain out the uh, hydraulic fluid and I run a risk of damaging things so I didn't want to start the I don't want to try and start and run the tractor so hopefully this thing's gonna start again when I bought the tractor it wouldn't run because the valves were hung up in the head from rust and never did figure out how the heck the water got in there. Well, I'm hoping that I didn't just, you know, let this sit for three years and have the whole thing happen all over. If memory serves me, when I did put this thing to sleep, I uh, sprayed some lubricant down into the cylinders and everything. So hopefully it's going to be okay. We won't know. So got to get to this shaft. Let's talk about what's wrong with the shaft why I wanted to wait until I had a TIG welder and what I'm in, uh, gonna end up doing to this thing. All right, so this is the uh, steering shaft or steering column from the tractor. And uh, as you can see, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty intricate uh, piece of, uh, of work here. So the first question would be, well, why not, I've got the lathe, why not just make a new one of these shafts? Well, because we got a whole lot going on here. We've got uh, this very interesting worm gear type of deal down at the end here. We've got these surfaces here, which are, I believe, bearing surfaces or seal surfaces to deal with. We've got different diameters to deal with. We've got a threaded area here with a keyway. And then on this very end right here, what we're supposed to have is we're supposed to have splines which you can see what's left of them here okay and then this area right here believe it or not is supposed to be threaded so when I bought the tractor there was what was left of a what looks like may have even been the original three-spoke uh, steering wheel 
and it had been tack welded onto the shaft here. So a little bit of grinding and I was able to pull that off and see what was left here. So what we ended up with was a complete mess. To make matters worse, it almost looks like, judging from the marks and everything here, that over the years maybe somebody was even putting on uh, vice grips onto this thing to turn it. I, I don't know what the heck was going on here. Long story short, what we end up with is we end up with this whole area here that's supposed to be threaded so that you can put a nut on to hold on the, the steering wheel is destroyed. And then even the splines themselves are really pretty, pretty uh, bad. They're in really rough shape. So that's not good. So I thought about my choices. Okay, obviously making this whole shaft new, we just talked about that. Not going to do that. Choice number two, try and find a replacement shaft. Occasionally these pop up on eBay. Um, more than not, though, it's hard to get, I think I've talked about this in the past, it's hard to get any of the internal components to this, this power steering gearbox because... Most of your shops that, uh, you know, junkyards and salvage yards that have used parts for these, they want to sell a used box complete. They don't want to break it down, which is why I ended up having to try and cobble together and make my own little roller bearing because you couldn't get that assembly. The parts no longer available and no one, I mean, no one would sell me that part because every person that I was able to contact that had one of those, it was already inside of a box that they weren't going to take apart. And again, we were back to, well, on the average, $1,000 for a used box that I don't even know what the condition of it would be. Option number two, I could try and reuse these splined, uh, this splined area here and maybe, you know, hope that it would, it once cleaned up, it would still grab pretty well. And then I would have to repair this area right here that needs to be redone because the threads are completely destroyed. Well, if I want to do that, I would end up um, having to possibly recreate these splines in the end, which is not as easy to do as, say, for instance, uh, making just a taper with a keyway or something along those lines. So... I was like, huh, what if I try and just not do it this way at all and come up with a new plan? And I'll tell you another thing that kind of drove my logic here. The steering wheels. The steering wheel, you know, has to be splined. Well, I ended up getting this brand new steering wheel cheap. Okay, it's a three-spoker like the original, all right? This is actually a steering wheel I believe this is a Tisco. This is a Tisco steering wheel made in, uh, see, it's a Tisco, Tisco logo right there. Part number 180576M1 steering wheel. Quantity of one. It's manufactured in March 2016. Made in Turkey. I bought this of all places from Tractor Supply Company. And believe it or not, gee, I wish I could remember what I paid for this, but believe me, I'm known for searching for deals. And even looking on eBay and everywhere else, it was actually the best deal was for me to buy this from Tractor Supply online. And I want to say this steering wheel was only like 30 bucks, which, you know, for a, uh, for a brand new steering wheel, that, that's cheap enough, right? It's right here. It's 20 bucks. So this is actually a, uh, according to some of the other sites that I see, this was actually a Massey Ferguson replacement steering wheel uh, for like a Massey number 65. That sound right? Anyways, 20 bucks for this steering wheel. And then, uh, if I recall correctly, I think if you had it shipped to your local store, uh, you didn't even pay shipping on it. So... As opposed to, I'm not going to look it up, but trust me, if I go and I look for an IH350 steering wheel, it's actually like twice as much money, if not more. It's like 40 or 50 bucks. The wheels are really almost identical, except for what this has is this has a straight shaft that's keyed. That's all it has. The straight shaft that's keyed, there's no taper. I'll double check that, but I'm almost positive it's not tapered. And there's no splines. So this is a lot easier for them to manufacture at the factory where they make these in Turkey, okay? 
a lot easier to make this than it is to make something that has all those little splines that have to be cut on the inside. All right, so when I saw how cheap I could get the steering wheel, then that really was the, uh, the big driving final nail in the coffin, so to speak, of the idea of, re, of reusing this the way it was. So I decided, hey, I'm going to I'm going to clean this all up, and I'm going to uh, basically recreate an area here that I can actually put the uh, that steering wheel on here, and you know we'll end up cutting a, a keyway, and then we're going to have to still have an area with threads on the end. So the thing I've got to figure out though is I've got to figure out exactly how this is going to work because if you notice. This right here, this area right here, appears to be where the original shaft, uh, where the original steering wheel went on here, the splined area. It's very short, and I know the wheel's not that short, so I'm thinking maybe this whole thing was even longer than it is. But, uh, no, I take that back, because actually there's a countersunk hole on the end here. So... It's kind of a mystery. So I'm wondering whether or not the steering wheel actually goes over part of the, the whole hub for the steering wheel. Maybe it covers this part here too. Because this is all clean right here. So I would say all of this is below the seal that would be at the top of the tube to keep, I guess, water from getting down inside there. So this must be the area where the hub of the steering wheel goes and then this area here. I can almost see like the last bit of remnants of thread left on there. So, so I think we can do this. So for starters, I've got to clean this up. I've got to remove the remnants of these uh, splines right here, okay? And uh, this garbage on the end here. And then I'm going to have to build this all back up with a TIG weld and then machine it to my final, uh, my final dimensions. So the first thing is I want to double check and see what we're dealing with over here. So according to the uh, description on the uh, Tractor Supply website, this is a three-quarter inch hub. However, if I set my calipers to 750 thousandths, which uh, is three quarters of an inch, it won't go in. And guess what? On the back side, it goes in with room to spare. So it is tapered. It's a tapered hole, so oh, okay. So on the positive side, that's actually good because the taper, when that nut is tightened down, it's gonna drive that taper in and that's actually gonna give it more holding power. So in conjunction with the keyway and the taper, uh, that's gonna add strength. As opposed to if this was a perfectly straight shaft and a straight hole, all of the torque would be focused on that keyway on that piece of key stock that goes in there and that might be a little too weak i guess well so that's going to make things a little more interesting for me because i'm going to have to cut a taper on there but it's something that i think is completely doable and the other thing i was curious about was well what's the deal with the depth of this completely and uh it's just over an inch it's like 1.195 well i went over to the tractor where this thing was hanging off the back <laughs> oh First, I thought it'd be nice to remind everybody how bad this was, in case they hadn't seen it before. And file this on the sins of the farmer, I guess, right? So uh, the spokes have obviously broken at one time or another, and these blobs of what look to be watered bubblegum are actually welds, believe it or not. And then uh, get a couple of holes that were drilled in here. I'm not sure what the heck was going on with this thing. But anyways, it's a... Uh, Nasty to say the least. So um, I just wanted to get this because I want to measure the depth of this right here. And hopefully it's going to be about the same as the new one. Yeah, it's about an inch, so that'll work. Well, I just double-checked my measurements of the new hub. And the new hub is about this much, about 195 thou thicker. So the problem is if I have the uh, new hub on there it's going to actually stick down this much further than it than it should 
So I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to try and make this whole shaft a little bit longer to compensate for that. So what I really need is I need to pick a point where I can actually use as a reference on this thing and uh, that way I can know where where I'm going. So I could use, I've got my really, really large pair of steric calipers that I could actually take a, an overall dimension of the whole shaft. But those are kind of unwieldy to deal with. And since I've got a couple of reference points to deal that I can use here, I've got a couple of reference points. I've got this shelf right here is a good one. I could even use this edge right here. Well, let me see. So I'm gonna need a bigger pair of calipers than that. These aren't quite big enough. I'm gonna have to call out the big guns after all. Thirteen point two fifty, so thirteen and a quarter inches. So what I did was I took a measurement from this little shelf right here to this line right here that uh, separates this part of the shaft with the uh, actual part that has these splines on it, and it's almost exactly thirteen and a quarter inches. So that's what I'm going to go with. I don't need to be super accurate. Um, which probably begs the question, why didn't I just use a ruler? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I thought it would be fun to break. That's the first time I've used those calipers since I bought them at an auction. And uh, judging by the look and the smell of them, they were probably buried deep underneath a bench somewhere and hauled out on the day of the auction. So now I'm going to get a measurement from here to the, uh, the total width of this section with the splines and then try and get as close to possible the total width of the section where the threads used to be. Call that 525 thou. That end so badly damaged is a little tougher, but it's looking like that might be 500 thousandths. And I think I'll be okay if I leave it at 500 thousandths. I've got that difference I've got to make up. All right, so I know this is tapered. This is the wide end. So what I did was I, I set these calipers so that I can just feel the slightest bit of drag so I can get a uh, dimension at the widest point the very edge here 805 thou seven hundred and thirty five so if I load my uh, numbers into an online taper calculator, I put in the 0.805 for the major diameter and the 0.735 for the minor diameter over a length of 1.195, I plug all that in and it calculates the taper to be 5.858%. There's a list of common tapers down here and the closest one would be 6%. So I realized that I could have a little bit of error in any one of these numbers and might end up getting to that 6%. But I'm still not sure. It would be nice if I could definitely figure out what the taper is. So I went uh, and I searched, and lo and behold, on Steiner tractor parts, they were nice enough to actually describe. Okay, so here's the uh, steering wheel. It fits the TO35, which is what this steering wheel supposedly fits. And it says, uh, it's a keyed hub, 11 sixteenths to 13 sixteenths shaft. So they're, they're, they're defining the taper right there. So if I take 11 sixteenths, that's actually 0 0.6875. And I take 0 0.1825, which is 13 sixteenths. I'm going to plug those back into my calculator over one inch just for the heck of it and see what comes up. Well, that's interesting. If I plug in those numbers... Over one inch, it's like a 12 point something taper. So just for the hell of it, I put in one and a quarter inches, which my hub measures about 1.195 on this on this uh, replacement wheel. It's an even 10% taper. Huh. Well, I've tried. I pretty much given up trying to calculate the taper. Wasted enough time. 
Uh, so what I did was I put the old original steering wheel back on and I drove it back on to the point where I think it originally was supposed to be. And then I took a measurement from this uh, bottom edge of the hub right here to this ledge right here. And I get exactly 12.75 inches, so 12 and 3 quarters. Uh, so now when I take this off, I'll know that when I, when I make this shaft a new to accept the new hub that I want the bottom of the hub to end up at the same point right here so I'll probably end up having a little uh, a little collar or a shelf right there this area here that rides in a bearing so it's a bearing surface so I don't want to get it all marred up so I just have a thin piece of shim, brass shim stock. And I'm going to try to clamp this in there near the rear of the jaws. That way I'll have that much less protruding out. So before I completely tighten that down, I'm going to bring my, uh, my live center in. Hopefully what's left of this hole is going to still be good enough for this to ride. Let's throw an indicator on it and see what it looks like. All right, so I had to move it out to the jaws out here because I, was, I wasn't I was able to get it to run uh, true very well at all. So now I'm on this bearing surface right here, which is fairly smooth. And if I go around all the way, it maxes out at around eight, which might not sound good, but this is my Tessa test or Tessa test indicator, and this is a half ten thousandths indicator. So that's actually running less than a thousandth out. that's going to be good enough as far as cleanup goes um, 
I guess I'll, I'll try and build this up with some TIG weld now.